Other important news, uh, after the failed summit with President Trump, North Korea's dictator is boldly warning that any further negotiations will have to be done his way. Brian Todd has been looking into this for us. Uh, Brian, a tough uh, new line from Kim Jong-un. A tough line indeed, Wolf, one that President Trump and his team are publicly ignoring, at least for the moment. Kim does say that he and President Trump have a good relationship, but he also seems to feel he's the one who can lay down the conditions for a future summit. It's a brazen move by an emboldened young dictator. Kim Jong-un now apparently trying to dictate negotiating terms to America. In a speech to his Supreme People's Assembly, North Korea's leader recently laid out a series of ultimatums if the U.S. wants to resume denuclearization talks. The U.S. has to, quote, stop the current way of calculation and approach us with a new way of calculation, Kim said. If the U.S. doesn't, he says the prospects for problem solving will be dark and very dangerous. As for a third summit between Kim and President Trump, it would have to be, quote, with the condition that the U.S. has the right attitude. Kim is talking to Trump as though he's a teenager who has to be told, look, you are out of control. Come back to being my child. I'm in charge here and come to the table. What he's saying is that deal has to be agreeable to him and based on Hanoi, that's a pretty bad deal so far. During their second summit in Hanoi, President Trump walked away from Kim with no new deal on denuclearization, after Kim asked for almost all sanctions on North Korea to be dropped. But as he rattles his saber, Kim also appears to be hedging his bets, playing up his personal chemistry with President Trump, saying in his latest speech that the men, quote, still have a good relationship, something the president echoed Monday have a very good relationship with Kim Jong-un. He just said the other day he looks forward to more talk. Talk is okay. But experts say no matter how much Kim wants to talk, the North Korean dictator will always feel he needs his nuclear weapons to maintain his strength. The bottom line is there's nothing you can really see that suggests the North Koreans have any intention to give up their nuclear weapons. Tonight, as Kim works to restart negotiations internationally, at home he appears to be shaking things up in his leadership and his family. On Saturday, Cho ryong hae was elevated to the top position in North Korea's legislature, essentially making him North Korea's second highest official. Cho is reportedly the father-in-law of Kim's younger sister, Kim Yo-jong, who until now appeared to be consolidating power, seen just feet away from Vice President Pence during the Winter Olympics. Just a few weeks ago, she was seen as a key player at her brother's summit with President Trump, spotted ducking out of view as the two men met even getting off Kim's train first to make sure everything was in place for his arrival. But on Saturday, experts say she was not mentioned by name in state media coverage of the gathering of the legislature, and she was no longer listed among this year's alternate members of the Politburo, although she did appear in this big group photo of party leaders. Experts on North Korea's leadership say while they can't explain Kim Yo-jong's sudden absence from the spotlight, they believe behind the scenes her power is undiminished. The blood tie is everything. She is his most trusted advisor. At the end of the day, she is the person that he can rely on in a way that he cannot rely on any other advisor. Kim Jong-un now says he is willing to, quote, be patient and wait until the end of this year for the U.S. to decide if it wants another summit. Analysts say one reason he's saying that is to bide his time to try to work on his nuclear bomb and missile capabilities in secret so that maybe in 2020 he'll have more powerful weapons to unveil if this process with the United States takes a turn for the worse. Wolf? All right, Brian, thank you.